What is your most disturbing, scary, or creepy real story? Serious Part 3. For more such content, please like and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. When we first moved into the house I grew up in, I used to hear things calling my name from the opposite end of the house, like I would be in my room playing with Legos or something, and I would hear my dad call my name from his room, so I'd go to my parents' bedroom and ask them what they wanted, and they'd always tell me that they never called my name. Being a little kid, I honestly started to think that they were playing a joke on me, because this happened about once every couple of days. Well, one night it happened, and I went to ask them what they wanted, like always. But right as I stepped into their room, I heard my mom's voice calling for me from the living room, which is all the way on the other side of the house. It was at that exact point that I knew no one was tricking me. Because I was looking at both of my parents sitting in front of me, I kind of kept this to myself until my brother was diagnosed with partial narcolepsy. One of the symptoms of narcolepsy is apparently oral hallucinations, so I thought maybe I had it too. Went and got myself checked, completely fine, so I have no idea what was calling my name all those years, and I still hear it at night whenever I come visit and stay over. Account 2. My brother. I were both under seven years old. He may be four and I six. We were playing outside in the snow when a strange white car pulled into our long driveway. This was uncommon since our driveway was hidden. The window rolls down. A man with short hair and goatee pulls up a camera and takes our picture. Then he rolls up the window and drives away. Never had any closure or follow-up on that situation, but it freaked my mom out so bad. Account 3. So, my uncle used to work a lot when I was younger. He's done a lot of different things to make money, but one consistent thing is that in the summer months and into late fall, he paints houses. It's a legitimate business and everything. He's got a truck with a number and a name and supplies in the back. The works. Every now and then, he would call my dad when he needed a little extra help, and I'd work for him. No big deal, really. It's just painting houses. What could possibly go wrong? Well, it takes a while to paint a whole house. If the weather conditions aren't right, then you can't paint. One particular fall was extremely wet. It rained what felt like every single day. My uncle would paint multiple houses at a time, so sometimes he would get caught up due to situations like these, and I'd work a little more than usual. That was fine by me, though. The job wasn't hard, and it paid well. Anyway, it was a warm day for late fall, but there was still a distinct chill in the air, one that kind penetrated through you and stung your soul. My uncle had this job he had to finish. It was an old Victorian house in a quiet part of town, a lady and her husband, who was an author, lived there, due to the weather it had taken longer than expected to paint the house. And there were family issues going on at the time, which further complicated things. So, my uncle gets a call one day from the lady who lives at the house. She says that her husband is trying to write his next book, but he keeps getting distracted by the scaffolding outside the house, so she wanted to know if we could come over and finish the job as soon as possible. My uncle was always an honest businessman. They had contracted him to do the job in mid-summer. Account 4. I posted this on another through a few weeks ago. About a month ago, I went over to my girlfriend's house. Except I felt really uneasy when I went into the living room. Turns out, they replaced a china cabinet with one of her grandmothers, whom passed away a few months back. Her grandmother was bedridden in the hospital, and I've ever gotten to meet her. I felt uneasy the whole time. Being around her grandmother's furniture made me so anxious and almost sad. When I told her she said it was probably nothing, she went to the bathroom. When I went over to the cabinet, it was about six feet tall, dark wood. It had two doors on the side and glass up front, and in the back was a mirror. I was looking at the teacups and small baby dolls when I could swear I saw someone in the mirror behind me. Just a silhouette, I called out to my girlfriend. But as I did, I heard a shrill screech from the bathroom. I start pounding on the door, and it opens. She was sitting on the floor, crying. She said she saw someone in the bathroom mirror. 
We booked it out of her house. No shoes, no jacket, nothing in right to my car. I dove for an hour or so, with no destination. When I returned her to her house, her mom was sitting on the doorstep. She said she kept seeing shadows move. Nope. I will go out of my way to make things like this happen. Someone claims their house is haunted. I want to see. Someone said they think they saw a skinwalker. My friends are looking. I've never found anything. But this, this was something else. Count five. When I was in nursing school long ago, there was a lady that did not want to be resuscitated by all means. Later, she became altered, and her family gained power attorney over her. They changed her code status from DNR to full code, even though that was not their mother's wishes, since they had power attorney over her, we had to follow the children's wishes. The lady went into VFib with no pulse or breathing. We started CPR to the code chart arrived at the bedside. The doctor went to administer a shock, but the machine failed. He tried again and again. The machine would not deliver the shock. The minute she passed on, the machine worked. The hospital checks the defibrator daily and it not working has never ever happened before. In the end, the lady ended up getting her wish of no resuscitation. Everyone was freaked out over this. I have been a nurse 20 years and never seen this happen before. Account 6. I was 16 and woke up in the middle of the night to seeing my clothes being rustled about in my doorway. After washing my clothes, I like to hang dry them on my door frame. I notice some really gray, veiny-looking legs, and then I see these really long, pointed sticks moving through my clothes. It took me a second, but my sleepy eyes adjusted to see one of the most grotesque, demon-looking motherfuckers I have ever seen. He was extremely skinny and had a intended stomach. His skin was gray and veiny, and those long sticks were his fingers. His chin was long. His eyes had no lids on them and were unusually big. His tiny mouth was in a pucker and moved like he was eating an imaginary lollipop. His hunchback looked as though it tore out of the strange hospital gown he was wearing. He just stared at me and I tried to scream my grandmother awake who was sharing a room with me for the weekend. He wouldn't stop staring and I stared back and tried to shake my grandmother awake. I started noticing other things about him, like how large and cone-like his head was and how hairless and shriveled he looked as he stood still, surprised I could see him. My grandmother woke up, looked towards the door, and he was gone. In the weeks leading to this encounter, I had been experiencing strange things in my house, like my bedroom door slamming and locking on its own. One night I woke up to what felt like several hands touching my feet and legs and horrible nightmares. After the experience with this strange gray man, I told my parents, and they had my room exercised. IDK. If an exorcism really made those horrible things stop or gave me peace of mind from things I was manifesting myself, all I know is I don't experience those things anymore, and I'll never sleep with a door open again. Tell DR. I saw a demon who was surprised I could see him and had to exorcise my room. Not sure if real or I manifested it in my stressed-out teenage brain. Account 7. When I was in elementary school, my family decided to add on to our house. So, we hired an architect and contractor. We live in an old colonial home that was built to be historically correct, i.e. 200-year-old soft wood floors, proper paint colors, etc. Because of this, my parents chose to have all of the wood trim painted in the addition. The contractor didn't want to because we actually bought quality wood and he thought it was a waste of time. So, we ended up hiring another contractor after about a year of arguing and having almost no work done on the house. Even though the contractor and his team were consistently being paid, the new contractor was one that my parents, lawyer, had met through church. Most of his team also went to that same church. Now, we always tried to be hospitable towards the workmen and would offer them drinks and snacks, particularly in the summer. We live in a hot, humid climate that is pretty much unbearable. So my mom would send me outside with lemonade and the like for the workers. They were all really nice. And I remember having conversations, nice conversations with them about whatever now nine-year-old me found interesting. I particularly remember this one guy named Kenny, the actually contractor never showed up on the job, and Kenny was put in charge, kind of like a gopher. He was always really nice to me. Anyways, a few months after they finally finished the addition on our house, 
I think it took about two and a half years. Kenny's name is published in the newspaper. He was put in prison for charges of pedophilia. Before he worked at our house, he had been on a list of sex offenders. The contractor found this detail about his employee unnecessary to share with my parents. I was an elementary age girl at the time. My brother was in middle school. My parents would leave us home alone with the workmen there on occasion. Thinking about this still gives me the creeps I can't. Account 8. It's not something I tell people on a daily basis, but when I was little, I'm gonna say 7 or 8. I woke up to a banging on the window. At first I figured it was just the wind and tried to shrug it off to go back to sleep, but I kept hearing footsteps in my room. My room had a large enough area for you to walk in circles in front of my bed. You know the kind of noises that are just supposed to be the house settling in? It sounded like someone was circling my room. I used to sleep with the radio on, and at this very moment it was playing a very depressing song that I can't remember the name of, but if I hear it on the radio, I get the creeps still. So that really started to scare me. The room also felt as if it was getting colder. At this point, I was really scared. I decided to make a run for it to my parents' room down the hall. As I passed through the area where the foots were, I got so incredibly cold that I could see my breath, and I froze for a sec only to hear the words, I'm lost. I bolted to my parents' room, hid under their bed, and cried myself to sleep. Account 9. We were living with my grandparents at the time. In my aunt's room was a two-foot-tall Victorian-style doll converted into a lamp. The lamp would only turn on by holding the doll's cold plastic hand and raising and lowering the arm. The doll stood on a nightstand next to my aunt's bed, facing the door, greeting everyone who entered with a creepy dead eye smile. I was alone in the house one day and wanted a blanket from my aunt's closet. Luckily for this scaredy cat, there were two important factors that worked in my favor. One, it was mid-afternoon and wouldn't need the lamp's light. And a two, the closet was located immediately next to the door's entrance. So without lifting my gaze, I stared at the floor, entered the room and turned 180 degrees. Now my back was towards the doll, I quickly swung open the closet door and reached down for a blanket, when suddenly something about the room was different brighter. The light was on, and the peach fuzz hairs on the back of my neck uncurled. I froze for an eternity, then felt my survival instinct kick in and wanted to run screaming in horror. But before all that, I still had to look. Man, I wish I hadn't looked. As I turned to exit the room, I lifted my stupid head only to confirm that the doll's hand was raised and that it was pointed directly at me. Such traumatizing vision burned in my brain since I was 13. Much uneasy, creepy memory. Account 10. A few years ago, there was a small plane accident that occurred in a neighboring town. I was part of the county volunteer search rescue group. And when we got the call, I was one of the responders to help try and see if there was any chance of a survivor from the crash. We found out from the sheriff that was there that it was an elderly couple and their young granddaughter that were in this plane. Immediately, it went dead silent. You could see the life drain from the other responders' faces as soon as it was said, upon getting to the area that the crash happened at, it was clear that there would be no survivors from this accident. It wouldn't have a happy ending. There would be no joyful and tear-filled reunion. This plane was absolutely destroyed. Our lead turned to the group and said if anybody was uncomfortable or not willing to do the recovery of the bodies, there would be no hard feelings or anything held against them. Some people just aren't cut out for this. About half of the group said they wouldn't couldn't do it. They helped set up the repelling lines, made some radio calls to other teams that were lower on the hillside helping us navigate through the broken trees and aircraft parts to get to where we expected to find the bodies. I'll never forget the feeling of complete utter numbness I experienced that day. The first thing any of us saw was this small stuffed teddy bear and the blood that had soaked onto it. When we finally were able to get down to the bodies, we had to stop and collect ourselves. It was heartbreaking to see this little girl with such empty, devoid eyes. She was gone, never to grow up and experience life like most of us had, never to know the joys, 
aches, frustrations, sadness, excitement, and everything else life throws at you. I've seen a lot in my few years as an EMT. I've seen drug overdoses, diabetic shock, car crashes, suicides of all manners, but this fucked me up for a while. Nobody should have to go through what we went through to help bring closure for the family. Nobody should have to deal with bringing back a child in a body bag. But if I don't stand up and do it, someone else has to bear the heartache, the depression, the numbness, and I don't ever want someone else to experience it like I did. Account 11. Not all that scary, but relatively creepy. A couple of friends and I were at the annual fair held at a local park one year. Being 14-year-old girls, we thought we would be ah cool and separate from the large crowd at the fair by walking along a rather long walking trail that starts at the fairgrounds and travels on for a few miles. Well, it was late in the evening, and the lighting was bad. We were sitting at the mouth of a tunnel, which sat at the top of a secluded hill. When a lady with a baby approached us, she asked us if we knew a man who was standing at the bottom of the hill near a bench looking in our general direction. We told her we didn't, and her response was, Well, he's been following you for a while. I don't know what he's up to, but you should be careful. Needless to say, we high tailed it back to the fair. Account 12. When I was a kid, I had to go to sleep early at about 8 p.m. I was laying in my bed, staring at the hallway lights, listening to my family laugh in the kitchen. I was squinting my eyes to see how long I could make the light rays extend out. Then there appeared an old translucent lady with long, curly yellow hair, and she wore a purple flower dress. She stared at me with a smile half the size of her face. I kid you not. I tried to scream, but nothing came out, so I placed the blanket over my head and cried myself to sleep. The next morning, I asked my sister if we had a visitor the night before. My words probably were, did an old white lady visit us last night? She said no. I told her what I had seen, and she said it probably was my guardian angel. Thinking of it now, I have to say. Bullshit. That's some freaky way to say hello. My classmate later mentioned to his friends, he saw a teenage boy with the same half the size of your face smile standing at night in his backyard as he was going to close the garage door. His reaction was to run back into the house. TLDR. The moral is guardian angels exist, and they like to exaggerate their smiles while staring at you in the night. Account 13. A friend of mine is the type who always has wacky adventures and funny stories to tell. I swear half the reason I keep her in my life is for the entertainment value of the crazy shit that happens to her. But this one wasn't funny. When she was about 20, she was leaving a bar one night. Legal age here is 19, and as she was saying goodbyes to her friends, a fight broke out between a couple of other guys nearby. It was brief. Basically, one of them shouted at the other for eyeballing his woman or some BS, then just pulls a knife, stabs him right in the gut, and bolts. This was not a sketchy neighborhood or anything. It was about as unexpected as if someone had pulled a knife in a mall food court. My friend has fortunately had some first aid training, but she's never actually had to use them before. Somehow her instincts kick in. She staunches the wound, is keeping him conscious and aware, enlists someone to call 911, all that jazz, tended to him for nearly 20 minutes, though she lost all concept of time, when the paramedics came. She just stood up and walked off to sit down on a nearby bench, covered in a stranger's blood. She had gone into shock and didn't move from that spot for a good half hour. Fortunately, the paramedics were smart enough to realize that they should take care of her, too. So once they got the guy stable and into the ambulance, they gave her a blanket and talked to her a bit to make sure she was going to be all right and that she had friends who would make sure she got home. So it all turned out okay. But it's still the most WTF horrifying story that's ever happened to someone I know personally. Account 14. When I was 18, my grandfather was having heart problems. I would wake up every morning and go to his house to see him. I would just talk to him, help him around the house, and watch TV with him. He has been really lonely since my grandmother died three months ago. I will never forget this moment. It was June 7th. I arrive at his house, and my grandfather has the biggest smile on his face. I was so happy to see him smiling. He looks at me and says, Guess what? I'm going to go see my wife in two days. At the moment, I thought my grandpa lost it. 
Believe it or not, my grandfather died two days later in his sleep. The thought of it is scary, creepy, and disturbing. It is like he knew he is going to die in two days. On a side note, the last two days he was alive, he was smiling and peaceful. I can't explain it. It felt like he knew something we don't know. Account 15. When I was 13, my mom used to drop me home from school and then pick my brother up. One day, I was dropped home and went on the computer like always. Minutes later, I heard the sink in our kitchen turn on and off and the microwave door open and shut. I assumed that my mom still hadn't left and didn't think anything of it. Another couple minutes go by and I hear my mom and brother come in. I greet them saying, wow, that was fast, you just left. My mom was confused and said that she left a while ago. I'm still not sure what happened. I think the scariest part was not expecting that something weird was happening.